Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to Words. I'm Jen, I'm a speech pathologist, and today I'm going to be speaking about a foundational skill for communication, cause and effect. Why is cause and effect so important? Well, it's a really important early developing cognitive skill that's essential for communication. Before a child can be expected to engage in social interactions and to develop verbal language per conversation, they must acquire cause and effect. Let's think about when a child is very young and they're a baby in their crib. If the baby starts to cry, mom comes in and picks them up. Over time, this behavior is repeated. Child cries, mom goes in, picks them up. Well, the child is learning that if I cry, mom is gonna come to me and get, give me what I want. Many children learn the skill naturally, but if your child is developmentally delayed, we may have to directly teach them this skill. Cognition and language go hand in hand. If we don't have the cognitive skills, we are not gonna have the language. So I must emphasize again, if your child does not yet understand cause and effect, we cannot expect them to develop words and verbal speech. So we have to start here. Let's meet them where they are, okay? So there are some ways that we can teach cause and effect. Cause and effect can be taught through cause and effect toys. And it can also be taught through reinforcement. So today I'm gonna to be speaking about the reinforcement piece. Um, we're going to be talking about target behaviors and how we can reinforce those to continue that behavior. Um, for example, if the child is working on requesting, we that's the target behavior. We want them to request an item. Um, once they do request that item, we have to reinforce them with something extremely rewarding to them. Um, once they get rewarded that way, they're going to understand the cause and effect. Oh, I request, I get what I want. Um, so right now I'm going to show you some different ways that we can do that. Um, we're going to be talking about verbal requests, requests with signing, um, following directions, how we can use hand over hand assistance with this. Um, and then for children who are on a communication device, I'm going to show you how you can work on cause and effect as well. So, um, I'm going to have a guest come with me. Uh, my husband's going to come stay with me since I don't have any small children in the house. And we're going to demonstrate how some of these skills can be taught. So before we start, we're going to talk about different types of reinforcers. Um, we really have to know our children here and pick reinforcers that are going to be rewarding to them. So some different types of reinforcers, they may include verbal praise. So we make a big celebration when they do something that we want um, and they like that attention. Another one would be something tangible like a desired item, it could be a toy. Um, another one could be an edible, so their favorite snack. We would um, cut it up into small pieces so that we're not giving too much food. Edibles are not my favorite um, type of reinforcer, but they happen to be a primary reinforcer and they are super, super effective um, when your child is really not being compliant. Um, and another one would be tactile input. So it could be a big hug, it could be tickled, it could be deep pressure if, if that's something that your child seeks. Um, so pick a reinforcer that you think is going to be very rewarding to them and use that to teach cause and effect and to teach them the desired behavior. So I have my assistant who is going to come in and we're going to demonstrate how we can work on requesting. So let's say we're going to be working on, let's say your child is verbal and they're working on requesting with words. Um, so I might say, look, we're going to play with bubbles today. Do you want bubbles? I want you to say bubble. 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 Great job. You said bubble. Very good. Um, so he requested, he, uh, I modeled for him, and then he used his words to request, and he was immediately reinforced with a tangible item, bubbles. Um, let's say that he is not at the level of verbal speech yet, and we want him to maybe use a sign for, um, the word. Let's say that we've been blowing bubbles and we want to work on the word more, but um, he's not yet signing and we're just introducing this. So we can try to see if he imitates it first and maybe your child might not imitate. So we're going to say, oh, you want more bubbles? You say more, more, more. You want more bubbles? Oh, he's not doing it. So I'm going to do hand over hand and I'm going to take his hands put them together and make him do the sign. More, you want more? Oh, great job, you said you want more. Great job, pop, 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 pop. So in that instance, um, the child did not do the sign himself and I used it hand over hand assistance and I helped him execute that sign. Um, so with that, that counts as your child um, doing the target behavior or performing that skill. So 
hand over hand is perfect to use. Um, again, they learn that every time that I get help to do this sign, I get something that I want. So maybe eventually I'm going to learn to do that motor plan myself. Um, let's talk about <clears throat> if our goal here, another speech and language skill is to work on vocabulary and identifying things. So you may want to practice um, that at home with, with your child. So here I have some simple action cards. Um, I have a field of two. I have eat and sleep. So <clears throat> I want our child to, to identify one of these words. Um, so again, I might say, and here the reinforcer this time is going to be an edible. So favorite snack. <laughs> um, so I say, okay, ready? We're working for your practice. We're working for your practice. First, tell me which one is sleep. Show me sleep. Great job, sleep. Awesome. Very good. You touch sleep. You are sleeping. So I reinforce the desired behavior and then he's going to learn the cause and effect. Okay, if I comply and I touch the picture, this is what this lady wants from me, um, then I will get my desired item. Um, so again, <laughs> he wants another one. Show me eat. This one eats. Let's try again. Ready? Eat. Good job. I'm going to mix them up. Show me eat. Very good. You showed me eat. You got your practice. Very good. Um, so let's try for the children that are on communication devices. Using the device is actually a great way to teach cause and effect. So again, we're working for, we're working for bubbles. So I'm going to go over here. Let's say that this child is at the single word level. Um, so this child, the desired behavior is for the child to bubbles. request bubbles by bubbles. selecting that picture on his device. So I can model it and I can say, do you want bubbles? Do you want bubbles? Bubbles. Tell me bubbles. Your turn. You say bubbles. 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 That's right. You want bubbles. Very good. Pop, 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 pop. You can see that. Oh, he wants more. Very good. More bubbles. Again, um, he performed a desired behavior. He's requesting. Any way, shape, or form your child can do that, uh, and you're going to immediately reinforce it. So what did our child learn here? He learned that um, bubbles. if I select the button, that means that I'm asking for it. If he's constantly reinforced by me blowing bubbles, Bubbles. Every time he asks for bubbles in this way, he knows, okay, this must mean that I'm asking, I'm communicating. Um, so I'm going to keep pressing that button in order, in order to get what I want. Um, if your child is at the sentence level using a device, um, we may prompt them. Maybe they don't need as much support and we could hold out. We're going to use our withholding strategy. If you're not familiar with it, um, go check out my video on withholding. Um, so... If the child wants bubbles and he's reaching for it, I'm going to withhold it and say, oh, you want bubbles? Tell me. And he's going to make a sentence. So I want. <laughs> we can do hand over hand because he's not sure where it is. We're going to go to toys and bubbles. bubbles. Good job. I want bubbles. I want bubbles. Very good. You asked for bubbles. Pop, 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 pop. Um, <laughs> sometimes. Um, your child might not even need a tangible reinforcer. Sometimes they might just need verbal praise. Some children are really seeking your attention. And if we clap our hands and we say, yay, woohoo, um, to a desired behavior, some of the children really respond to that as well. So, um, you know your child best, choose a reinforcer that works, and you can work on your target behaviors this way. So I hope this has been helpful in teaching cause and effect. Um, and try it out this week. So stay tuned for more videos. Thanks. Bye.